Now we're doing a 40s retro style, kind of a wave to the hair, and uh, my name is Dickie from Hair Rule Salon, and uh, this is Christina, who's model here in New York. So on Christina, we're doing a 40s retro wave pattern to her hair that um, is, it can be easily achieved um, with, you're gonna not, not believe this, but a flat iron. Um, so to start out with, we're um, gonna put in a nice lightweight mousse to Christina's hair just to add volume at the root. And with straight hair, it's a completely different set of rules than say curly or wavier hair. Because this texture, generally women are, you know, trying to get more volume at the root and get their flat hair full. And so generally with this texture, you remove about 85 to 95% of the water out of the hair before you do anything. This helps to uh, give a lot of lift at the root and body to the hair. So instead of taking a brush to the hair, while it's wet, you just kind of rough dry it. Blonde hair also, if it's, if it's highlighted, high lift blonde, generally tangle easily, so that's why going in with a non-sudsy shampoo, like either a daily cleansing cream or wind, are some of the few uh, non sudsy shampoos out there. It's kind of like skincare for your hair. And the benefits to any texture from such a gentle approach to hair care is that you wind up with hair that's easier to, to handle. And you don't get breakage, and you don't get tangled like you would had you dried the hair out first. As you can see, Christina's hair is almost dry. And we haven't had to take a brush through it yet. We're still building volume. Remember, we're gonna add wave and volume to the hair, so we don't need to do too much pulling or adding tension to flatten out the hair. So really, as you can see, the hair texture is nice, it's shiny, it's straight, so you don't have to go in and use a lot of tension or heat to straighten hair that's already straight. You really want to be mindful with uh, the type of heat you put in hair that's been highlighted or this bleach blondes. That's to not get any damage to the hair. Okay, now we've got perfectly dry, straight hair ready for your iron. It's detangled and we didn't do any kind of uh, over drying of the hair so the hair will still have a lot of body into it. We go in and put our waves in. Um, just as a, another kind of bodybuilding product I like to use as a lightweight dry hairspray. Um, dry hairsprays actually work better with heat um, and they don't get sticky or help uh, allow the hair not to get stuck to the iron. And it's not a product that also flattens out the hair. So it's a great for prepping the hair prior to styling and using heat work. We're gonna start off our waves by, depending on the thickness of your hair, you'll wanna take a smaller section if you have thicker hair. Um, and you can take a larger section if you have uh, finer hair. So with Christina, she's got a kind of a medium grade hair type that's uh, it's not too fine, it's not too thick. She's got the perfect hair texture. And so we want our sections to be about an inch wide and we're just simply going to wrap the hair around your finger, take your flat iron, and what this does will we'll give it a nice crimped waving pattern that is simple to do. Hold it usually around 30 seconds. As you can see, you've got a lot of texture to the hair. You can put a 
long clip. Go into your next section. Hold that between 15 to 30 seconds. So the great thing about doing, uh, getting these waves with a flat iron is that it's if you're kind of dexterity challenged with a, with a curling iron, a lot of times a curling iron can kind of get complicated as to how you hold it. And what's great about a flat iron is that it's literally just two tongs. So it's much simpler for the person doing their own hair to uh, get great results. Basically just work around the head. Yeah, these styles are really great because they actually wear better after the next, uh, the next day because the hair has more texture to it. So you can get a, a couple of days, two or three days out of this. Then you can even move into a Maybe putting your hair half up and half down, getting an additional days out of it. And it doesn't matter which direction you do your uh, pin curls, um, any direction, it'll just hang. You want a more um, kind of uneasy, unstructured uh, wave pattern because it's a little more modern than having something too structured. Hot tools have gotten really great over the last few years. A lot of the store bought ones you get in the drugstore work just fine. Um, you want to make sure that you get a flat iron that uh, ranges, has a dial on it and has a temperature range usually from about 210 to about 375 at the most is all you need. And this is also a great way to be able to set your hair at night. So it's not something you have to feel like you need to do in the morning. It's something that's, you know, particularly if your hair is only 90% dry and you've got a lot of moisture in it, just setting it with lightly setting it with some heat and with these pin curls and a flat iron um, at night, we'll have a great set in the morning. Doing your hair at night also requires you not to have to put so much heat on your hair. Because a lot of times you're just reactivating either the hairspray or uh, really taking advantage of how much moisture has been left in the hair. So then at night, all you do need to do is probably sleep with a scarf on or a bonnet. You know, bonnets aren't so sexy, so stay with the scarf. So in the morning, you just take your clips out, Another thing you can use if you're going to sleep in the morning is a lot of times these clips are, uh, your clips can be too uncomfortable to sleep with, so using a large bobby pin um, will make it much more comfortable to sleep. And then in the morning, you simply take your bobby pins out and gently brush your hair, putting a little bit of finishing cream in the hair to uh, add more moisture and definition to your set. This steam coming off of the hair, that's always a good indicator that you're not doing any damage to the hair. Okay, so I'm on my last section and this literally took um, under 30 minutes. But you also don't have to take as many sections as I take. You can simply take four sections in the front, a couple sections on the, in the back, and maybe three or four sections on top. So I'm gonna take my clips out. And the great thing about uh, not pre-drying the hair or using a lot of heat on it to make it uh, smoother than it needs to be is that you end up with a lot of texture to the hair. Generally, like I said, women with straighter, finer hair uh, are looking for more texture in their hair. They're not looking for frizzy hair. They're just looking for their hair to have more texture to it. And there's really, there's, there's a couple of ways you can go about uh, styling uh, this way pattern. Um, you could simply let it fall out on its, on its own. I like giving hair the, uh, the opportunity to evolve on its own, so I don't like doing a lot to it. Um, or you could simply brush it out. But if you can see, you've got a really great wave pattern to hair that was straight. So now what I'm gonna do is take a hair rules finishing cream. It's uh, to be used on dry hair for flyaways, add more moisture to the hair. Um, and simply just finger comb the wave pattern. So now I'm gonna brush Christina out, just to get more volume to her hair. You can start from the underneath because you don't wanna flatten out the hair, so it's best to lift up, lift 
lift up sections. So a lot of times it appears as though when you brush out your set that you're gonna lose the set because the brush kind of straightens out the hair, but have no fear, uh, your curl or wave pattern will always come back in. So don't be afraid to overbrush your style. And as you can see, Christina has a lot more body. And it's not so structured, so it's a little more modern and she can wear this kind of for every day. So this is our final look. I'm Dickie, this is Christina, our 40s retro style. Um, and for more of these kind of tips and, and products, you can always go to naturallycurly.com. It's a wealth of information that you can find to learn about your hair texture. Now we're doing the celebrity brows. And I'm Bernadette, I'm a waxer at Unique Wax Center in New York City, and this is Angelina, and we're gonna show you how we do it. For celebrity brows, we use special uh, stencils, which are shaped um, differently according to different celebrities, and we are going to choose the right shape for Angelina. So Angelina's face is round, and she has a very beautiful full brows, and now I'm going to try to find the right shape to fit her face. Okay. Now, this shape wouldn't be good because it's rounded and it's not gonna make her face looking very good. I'm going to try to find the right shape for you, okay? This stencil is not gonna be the right one because you have a round face and this stencil is round, so it's not gonna make you look the most beautiful. But right here, we took a look before and this shape is gonna make your face look so nice. Your eyebrow is gonna highlight your face features. It's gonna open up your eye and make you feel nice, even younger, and feeling much better. Um, this eyebrow shape is softly angled. It's, it's a little bit uh, thicker in the beginning and then um, it's thinner right here. And I'm going to show you how to place the eyebrow, how make it even and where the brows should start and end. The easiest way to do that is to place a spatula or a stick right here where you have the tip of your nose, the, the corner of your eyes, and that's where the brow should start. You can mark that point with a pencil, okay? Now, the eyebrow should end where the line of the corner of your nose, the outer corner of your eye, ends right here, okay? And now open your eyes for me. Okay, now we can see where the R should be. We go from the tip of, uh, of the nose through her iris. Look at me. Right here. Now we can position the stencil. Okay, now I'm going to outline the right shape. So now when the um, eyebrow is outlined, we can clean any excess hair with our wax. Before I start with the wax, I'm going to cut any longer hairs that fall out of, out of the shape. Now you're ready for the waxing. Okay, I'm covering all the hairs that are going to be removed. Our wax is 100% natural wax. It contains beeswax and pine resin, and both of those, pro those products give it um, an amazing elasticity. Now, any excess hair on the top.
And when you do your eyebrows at home, always remember to figure out the right shape. I'm going to start tweezing any extra hairs that fall out of the shape. All right, so now we're done with tweezing. So we're removing the white pencil. Now I'm going to put some of the aloe vera gel. It soothes the skin and heals it. Okay. Now our sunscreen, just to protect the skin. Remember, sun can cause pigmentation. So sunscreen every day and always after waxing. All right, so the next step is um, the filling in of the brows. We are using mineral, mineral uh, makeup uh, for Angelina. And I'm going to use two different shades, mix them up together just to match her skin and her hair. Okay, I'm using medium brown and dark brown shades. I'm mixing them up together and now I'm going to fill in any empty spots in the brow line. Extend the line of the brow. If you're trying to grow your brows, you can always use some of the um, some of the powder or pencil just to make sure to cover any bald spots till your hair grows back in. I'm going to use a little bit of our eyebrow gel just to keep the hairs in the shape. Okay, all done. Because Angelina's face is round, the best uh, eyebrow shape for her is a little bit of arch. It's going to make her face look more oval. It's going to open up her eyes and gives her, give her a natural facelift. Uh, if you have an oval face shape, this is also a very beautiful, perfect sh uh, shape for you. If you have a square uh, face, more rounder shape will be better for you to just soften your look. Once again, I'm Bernadette at Unique Wax Center in New York City. Thank you very much, Angelina, for your help. going to perform a basic manicure for you. My name is Vanessa. We're at Blush Nail Lounge. The technician Erie will be completing the process on the model Leah. So the first step of the basic manicure process is shaping the nails. Um, there are many shapes you could shape your nails, square, round. Um, in this case, Erie's going through Leah's nails, shaping them in what we call squoval square on top and round towards the edges. Place the filed hand into the bowl just to um, start soaking the skin and particularly the cuticles. Now that they've been soaking, Aries applying cuticle softener and that does exactly what it's called. It softens the cuticles. And she'll take her pusher and start gently pushing back on those cuticles. Um, if you have a cuticle pusher at home, 
up. Again, you, you would just, just the same way that we're soaking your hands in warm water, we definitely recommend that you soften your cuticles before you do any trimming or cutting of any kind because it'll hurt otherwise. Um, you know, your cuticles are very sensitive and it's important to take care of them and you wouldn't want to, um, you know, take off too much of it either because it does serve as a protection on your nails against germs and that whole, and things like that that you come into contact with your on your hands every day. Now Erie's just wiping any excess liquid that still may be on the skin and she's preparing the nails for, um, you know, trimming any hang nails and excess skin that she feels like needs to be removed before getting further into the manicure process. So with the nipper, the cuticle nipper, Erie's going from nail to nail, just lightly trimming excess dead skin and any hang nails. Leah's nails are in pretty good shape, so she doesn't have to do too much work, but again, you know, just the dead skin that tends to develop in the corners that um, you can get rid of. Now we're using a cuticle oil. Um, it moisturizes and benefits the cuticles. Erie's placing it on every nail and also just lightly um, you know, rubbing and making sure that it enters the skin. Now this part of the basic manicure is um, a hand massage. So now with the hot towel, it's definitely a relaxing process. Again, just the hot therapy, wiping off any of the excess lotion. And again, the, the intense heat also helps for blood circulation and it's just a nice soothing effect to top off the manicure. Erie's just looking over her work on Leah's manicure. Again, finalizing everything before she moves ahead to the final step of applying color. Okay, Erie's um, going over the surface of every nail with acetone, cutting any excess moisture that still may be left behind from the lotion and the cuticle oil and those other steps that occurred during the manicure. She's just preparing the beds, getting ready, the nail beds preparing to polish. And now she's moving on to the base coat. base coat is an important step of the process because it serves as a foundation for the color that you're getting ready to apply and oftentimes you know without a base coat you'll find that your color will chip faster without this foundation it makes a difference the color that Erie's applying is from Essie's winter color collection the name of the color is cocktail bling it has a nice bluish lavender hue really flattering on many skin colors. And it's been very popular and trendy. You've seen a lot of blue hues in magazines and on the runways, and it's something that's become very popular among a lot of clients. So I, I feel like with colors, it's really what's most important for women. They just want you know, a trendy color, something that they're gonna look at and it's gonna, they think is flattering and pretty. Um, our favorite nail polish brands that do keep up with color trends and that sort of thing are definitely SE and OPI. Seasonally they'll release a, se a series of colors and they'll have some sort of theme and you know it definitely reflects with keeping up with the times in terms of fashion and again what's really visible amongst the runway and celebrities that sort of thing. With the polish, Erie, you know, again, as she did with the base coat, is carefully applying this color from corner to corner. She's using her right hand to brush the color on, but as you'll notice with her left hand, she's also pulling the skin back around, surrounding the nail, you know, just to just carefully make sure that she's getting every crease in every corner in that nail. 
This color applies pretty consistently. Um, it's a beautiful color choice. However, some other colors are a bit trickier with application. So we do recommend always using a second coat because it really helps finish off and give the color the consistent look that looks best on the model's hand or your hand. Steady, slow motions are the best way to apply nail color. Again, without too many long pauses or hesitations because nail polish formulas do tend to dry on the quick side. But again, steady, slow but steady applications guarantee a good coat of polish. Second coat is also um, you know, a good way to go over when you're at home any mistakes that you may have made upon the first coat. And now Aries applying the top coat. Again, this helps seal the color and, add it, and it's for added shine. A lot of times top coats often come in fast drying formulas. The type that we use here at Blush is Seche Vite and it's a really quick drying top coat. That completes the demonstration of our basic manicure. I'm Vanessa. Thank you to Erie, our technician, and to our model Leah today.